I'll keep shining my light, shining my light. Every day is Life same, with God is so good. So come join us in this fun life where we put God in the center of everything. How's everybody doing up here? We're, we're so thankful that you're with us and we're here for another time uh, with, with Gwen and Joe. So yeah. I'd like to talk about Adam and Eve. Yes and how they were forbidden by God to, to touch the tree of life and how they were compelled by Satan, the dark forces, to go against what God forbid them to do. And they knew in their hearts what they weren't supposed to do, yet they were compelled to do it and they did. And I think that that, can, that dynamic can be transposed into many things that we do in our lives, such as like the, the eating and the the substance abuse or whatever it is we're talking about. I think that man inherently knows what they're doing might not be what God wants and what they shouldn't do just based on what, what they want for themselves. Like if you were trying to lose weight, um, if you know, I, I've done this, so I, I can speak from experience. I know I'm not supposed to do something. I know it's going to be counterproductive to what I really want for myself but I'm compelled to do it anyway, I fall to that. What is that? I really believe that it is, that what makes everyone fall is that confusion. Because you got it coming from both sides. God said, don't eat it. Satan said, did God really say that? I mean, did he really, that's not what he really meant. That's not what God's meaning here. He knows that if you eat it, it would, it help you with not the good from evil. So did God really say it? So I think that the, it's the confusion. Did God really say it? So when you're at that temptation, did God really say it? I think that's the whole thing. And so you're sitting there <laughs> with that food and, 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 and like, did God really say not one more bite? Did God really say not one more glass of wine? Did God really say it? And here's the problem is that God really did say it, and if you continue in it, so Satan's life always going to be there, saying, God, you know, did God really, wait, have you got it right? I mean, the Bible's so confusing. I mean, is that Jesus Christ? Is that not Jesus Christ? That was the whole confusion about Christ. Is he the Christ, or is he not the Christ? I mean, did the Pharisees think he's the Christ? I mean, the negativity that's out there, surround, there'll always be negativity when it's the true voice of God. When Jesus spoke, there's negativity. When Jeremiah spoke, he was thrown into a cistern. How could that be a prophet if he's down in the cistern and the leaders don't like him? All the people are going, is that really a prophet? Or are they right? Or are they right? You're confronted every day. Is Gwen right? Or is, you know, is, is this, is, did God really say it? Or that's just her opinion on weight loss. That is really a, 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 an incredible testimony to what a masterful illusionist and liar that Satan is. Yes. The dark forces in the world are very, very, very skillful at their deception and creating that haze for us to try, try and decipher and, and see through. And it's it's literally divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that that's, uh, if we, if, we, if we can know that, that, that those forces out there are trying to get us confused, they're trying to make us doubt what we know is true. Mm -hmm. uh, if, we, if we can get a good handle on those things, then I think uh, we have a good platform to operate from knowing that, hey, uh, those thoughts that I'm having mm -hmm. are, are designed to confuse me. Mm -hmm. They're designed to lead me astray off of my path and I know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And you need to try and send those right back from where they came from. That's awesome. That is awesome. And I, I think one thing that really helps, and if you will do this, this is a very practical thing you can do. Please do this. From the beginning, what we've been talking about is getting a journal. And then you get in there and you journal it. But this is what this is my point, okay? Like when you meet that confusion, and of course you can put it on your phone, you can put it anywhere, but written down someplace at that place where you, like if you're in the kitchen or where, where is it that spot? Where is that spot that you tend to mess it up? I mean, everybody's got that spot. Do you take your food back to your bedroom? I mean, do you take it? Where, where, where is that spot, you know, that tends to, is it the kitchen? 
then you go in there and in there you have written down all the behavior modifications God's already given you. When I, if I start nibbling tonight, it's going to make me tired. I'm, my housework's not going to get done. Or, I'm, you know, I'm going to be crankier at work. You know, you guys, I mean, it's uncomfortable when you're overweight and you're wearing your suit or whatever you've got to wear to work all the week and you don't you know, feel good about yourself, you don't feel good about your looks. Hey, I, I'm not going to like the way I look in the mirror when I walk by a mirror. I mean, whatever it is, you keep that where that spot is. And you may have two different spots you could duplicate. Do use your phone, use whatever you want, but I will tell you, there's something about having a book that you know the behavior modifications and the truth in there that you got, that you also, you're, you're journaling this truth about, you know, what, hey, that, that extra nice wine leads to this, 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 and this, or this extra nibble of that particular food starts leading to this and this and this. Or, you know, like if, if you're working on worry or you're working, working on controlling things, you've got that list, you know, written by, by your bed, like, wait a minute, I need to flip this, I need to flip that. What happens to my mindset? What happened with Adam and Eve? It says, uh, he says to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? This is chapter 3 of Genesis. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden. Okay, so there's the confusion starts setting in. But God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. I have no doubt she didn't say it like that. She didn't say it like that. She didn't say it. She said it like this. We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat the fruit from the, like, the tree in the middle of the garden. That's probably what she said. Kind of like a regret. And you must not touch it or you'll die. Okay, so she's not really convincing herself, you know. So you must not eat it, you can't touch it, you're gonna die. You must not eat it, you can't eat it, you can't touch it. Not even eat it, these people ask, is it okay to eat it? You don't touch it, don't touch it, or you'll die. Okay, so she didn't. She wasn't clear on it, and he said, did he really say that? Well, he, he, in fact, he said this, and then he says, you will not, you will not surely die. You will not surely die. That's what, what Satan says. You will not surely die. And then it goes on to say, God knows. I mean, like, what he failed to tell you is that if you do this, 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 that, you, that it's okay. Tomorrow is okay. It's a, I mean, like, it's going to be okay. I mean, and it is, it is. It's very, it's it's all right there in Genesis. So what happened to them is that they did touch it, and it wasn't a physical instant poisonous death, like, you know, Snow White in the apple, whatever. It didn't necessarily get paralyzed. But they, something happened to them that was horrific. Their eyes, they didn't ever, you know, they didn't have clothes on. And so all of a sudden, they, you know, their eyes had been up. And then all of a sudden, once they touched that tree, their eyes went totally down. They saw they had no clothes on, and they started start fixing things. And they started selling big leaves up. So they started focusing on themselves and it's the focus on yourself that's going to kill you it's going to kill everyone the focus on yourself will give you people wonder all the time where does panic attacks come from the worry i mean like if you kept worrying and worrying and thinking you know if i control this and control that and all all the controls and all the the different worries in life you eventually get where you're isolated and you have panic attack disorders that's the result of this touching this tree and so, you know, that that's 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 what we've got to stop in this journey. I'm, I'm just recommending, please, write down somewhere, write down the truth. You know, in talking about this, the, the, the Adam and Eve dynamic, I, I, I'm always, I, I'm just sitting here marveling at at the contrast between man's having the choice. God gave us the choice uh, of doing right or wrong. The animals have been programmed with instinct, right? And they kind of do what they're programmed to do by God. But we, he gave us the gift of, of choice. And so along with that gift is man's, the human condition comes into that for me. And I watch myself and I watch how people uh, fail because we have, we have this thing called rationalization. We rationalize things. That rationalization combined with Satan's input into our lives 
So he said, surely you won't die, right? And, and Eve's like minimizing what God really said. So the, 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 <laughs> the, the odds are against us when we're really trying to do the right thing because we have the dark forces putting things in our mind and then we have the human condition of rationalizing things. And so we really and desire. have- and, and the, the flesh, the desire, and it's, it's kind of, a, a, you know, that's where we really have to be strong by identifying those 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 characteristics and qualities that, that, that come in to to create a platform to, to 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 be disciplined, knowing that there's a lot going against us and our, our desires, our rationalization, and those thoughts that can come into our head from the dark side. Uh, if if you can get a, a fix on those things and know that you're being attacked from, from, from that side and knowing that God's over here saying, hey, wait a minute. Uh, I really did say don't touch the fruit, don't eat the fruit, and don't even touch it. So you, you it, it kind of sets the stage where you, you know that you're rationalizing, you know you're not supposed to do it, and from that point maybe you can, you can really start to create that discipline that you're lacking. Uh, to, I like to, when people really know the good thing, well, all the good fruit out there, all the stuff out there. I think when the confusion lifts, you, you're, it, you do so well. You do so well. So fighting through that confusion, my belief is the hearts are good. That these these are good hearts that are fine. That you're going to get it. You're going to get all that weight off this year. We're not we're not giving up here. Can I just say one thing? Yeah. To you? Gwen was mentioning the journals and, and things like that, and her 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 system, this way down principle. And I've seen literally through my exposure to this, I've personally watched people have amazing success with what you bring in your weight loss system. And it really does work. This the writing things down, all, all of the, you know, the, the, there are people in professional uh, situations that, like, like captains of ships, pilots. These people all keep logs. And if you, if you, I, I just wanted to touch on that. If you log things down and write them, it really kind of implants it. it you, when you physically write stuff down, like in a journal, for me that works tremendously. But I've watched this way down system work for people when so many other things have failed. I have physically watched people change their lives through what you're teaching. And I just know that, that this system works for people, the way down principle. And we really care. Anybody seeking God, it's like, it, you just don't know how close I instantly feel to you. And, and Joe feels the same way. So thank you for joining us. And thank we love you guys. Thank yes. you so much. Pray for you guys. Pray for a great week. See you next time. I'll keep shining my light, shining my light. Every day is the same. Heading straight for the grave. And I'm thankful for living. Thankful for living. Thankful for living. Yeah. Keep shining my light, living my life. Every day is the same. Heading straight for the grave. And I'm thankful for living. Thankful for living, thankful for living, yeah. Under false skies, trees go Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you are notified when we have a new video. One day you'll be lighter. Dad, I say, give me reasons. You're a thriver. In dark seasons, a survivor. Ultimate.